And today we are going to talk about live link for simulink in control design. We are going to take a tour on console multiphysics, how it is used in multiphysics simulation and what the software up close and see how it might help you in your work. And if you have never used console before, you want to learn how it works, my presentation today should have answered those questions as well. Welcome everyone. Let me introduce myself firstly. So my name is Arpad Forberger. I'm one of the application engineers at Gamax Laboratory Solutions. So first, let's see today's topics. So we will start with a short overview of LiveLink for Simulink. What is it? How it can be used for simulation purposes? What is Simulink at all? And we will walk down through a short demo how to use functional mockup units in console in conjunction with Simulink blocks. So this is our current product suite and we will focus on features for structure mechanics and the live link for simulating. And a short introduction for, for simulation, what is it and how does it work here? So cross simulation can be used, which we refer to as functional mockup units uh, embedded into the simulating block diagrams as a simulating block. As you can see here, there is a little thumbnail of that one, so we will do that. So you can include a full resolution finite element model into your controller design, but there is more what you can do with console multiphysics. You can also create state space blocks so you can export and extrude state space models from the console finite element model, and you can create so-called reduced order models as well. So if you want to focus on smaller features, but you don't want to spend too much time for calculating the solution, these reduced order models can help you with that one. So it can be used in several different areas, such as in system integration, in control algorithms for signal processing, tasks and creating digital twins as well. Okay, and what is Simulink? It's a block diagram environment and it has very wide range of features for control design for signal processing leads. So we will focus on this control stuff and we will use it in conjunction with time domain simulation. And uh, you can see here in these little blocks. So this is a typical simulating block diagram. So if you want to solve a differential equation, you can use these integrators to do that. That's one way how you can solve, for example, Van der Brier Freedom mechanical model here, or you could use a Simscape version. That's the physical modeling play here and without creating blocks and without writing the equation of motions of the system. You just simply connect these symbolics like a mass, a damper and a spring, and you can create uh, very easily these mechanical systems. And you can create the same stuff for electrical and other domain problems problems, not just mechanical. Okay, so today's example, inverted pendulum, you can see schematics in the top right corner here. And what is it about? So we have a cart that is excited by a force in the X direction. The cart has a mass M and there is a rod uh, connected to this cart. We have a generalized coordinate theta, that's the one degree of freedom that describes the motion of this inverted pendulum and this body of mass has a mass of M and uh, we want to display and calculate what kind of force should we apply at the cart in order to keep it in the stable equilibrium position, which means when the theta close to zero. So we will have some inputs and the, like the force and we will have some outputs like the position and an angular uh, velocity and the velocity of the mass. And we will see here in the top or in the bottom left corner. So this will be the setup here in Simlink. So we will have some controllers, some PID blocks, and we have an um, FMU imported into our Simlink block, like a regular simulating block and that comes from the console finite element model. So let's jump into our console multiphysics setup. I will open up the setup here, which is already predefined to speed up the calculations. Okay, so we have a single physics, a single solid mechanics here. As you can see, we have a simple rod. That is our uh, inverted pendulum. And this is a rigid domain, as we can see here from the setup here. 
so we don't want to allow any uh, non-rigid deformations and from the prescribed displacement we have some constraint so we constrain the y displacement which is zero so this uh, rigid body can move only in the x direction we have an applied force in the x direction which is f0 as you can see here it flints set up under the parameters so we have an f0 that's so-called correction force and we have an f1 which is so-called perturbation force and we have a capital m which is uh, describing the mass of the cart which is added as a sub note here the mass and the moment of inertia so we have a capital m here so we add an external mass so we don't draw the cart specifically but just we simulate and model it by adding an extra mass to the rigid domain okay so we have the applied force we have the capital m which is the mass of the car we have the gravity load since uh, the gravitational force is affecting our motion and we have the point load which is applied at uh, point number two which is highlighted which is at the top here so this is point number two at the top and the magnitude of the force is f1 this is a parameter so this parameter can be found here at the top at the parameter list okay and we have a, we have a time dependent solution and if we plot the motion of this little pendulum we will see how it moves without any additional control algorithm so it falls out from the top equilibrium position and just falls down and makes a nice circle around that pivot point, which is applied here. And you can see there is no deformation since it's a rigid domain, so it simply turns around. So this is the finite element model. Okay, so when we are set up with that and the finite element model works, then we can go to the cost simulation for simulating node and here we can set up what kind of inputs and outputs should we use at the functional mockup unit in the simulating block library so whatever parameters are set up here at the parameter section they are appearing here like f0 and f1 the perturbation force and the correction force and we have some outputs the rotation of the road the displacement of the road and the velocity of the road and the x velocity here and that's all and we generate a file name and export as a functional mockup unit there and then we just open up uh, simulink and we can log in and include a block this is a simple simulink block as you can see here and if you look under the mask we can see here that we here we have this functional mockup unit so that's the full resolution finite element model embedded into our control algorithm so as you see there are two inputs the two forces that we have seen previously and we have the three outputs that we have seen previously the, the angular displacement of the road the displacement field and the velocity and then around similar if you have seen and we simulating before the typical uh, blocks for creating control algorithms here and then we have some outputs like the force that should be applied in order to make the card in the uh, upper equilibrium position and also the rotation the displacement and the velocity is plotted on these scopes here and we can see them here so these are the results. I already run this model to have some graphs here. So we can see how the input force is changing over time. So here in the horizontal axis, this is the time from zero to 10 seconds. So this is the force in Newtons. And here you can see the rotation of the inverted pendulum over time, the time history. And also you can see the the velocity of the inverted pendulum versus time and also the displacement so you can see there is a damping in the system as the force is changing uh, gradually 
in time, you can see that after some initial quite weak displacements, it starts, the amplitude of the displacement starts uh, to be smaller. And if we uh, would allow more uh, timestamps, like 20 seconds or 100 seconds or, or, or two minutes or more, we could see that the displacement, uh, so it has a trajectory that goes to the zero field. So after a very nice um, perturbation initial setup, the car should be and can be controlled into an um, upper in an uh, equilibrium position. Uh, of course, you need to tune these controllers according. So these controller blocks should be treated in a correct way in order to to get a very nice damping effect here to find the, the right force to control in the upper position. Okay, so this is how it looks like in a console motor physics. So you can include these uh, finite element blocks like uh, functional mock-up units, like importing just like a regular signaling block. And there are more examples, not just this one. So if we go back to our presentation slides here, then we can go on with that. So there are other uh, built-in examples. So you can visit uh, console's website or you can ask us to send you some sample models in the follow-up uh, email. So on top of this inverted pendulum, we have some battery models, how to model uh, capacity fade using a finite element model of the battery and using uh, controls and other simulating blocks and there is a battery control thermal a disc brake magnetic brake model and the thermal actuator also so this is also available with, with the built-in models with the shift models also so for the workflow workflow just to recap how to do and what to do so you set up the console model you set up the finite element model you set up the inputs and the outputs, what kind of control parameters would you allow to be included with the simulink block, then uh, export to a functional mockup unit. And then inside the simulink library browser, you just import this console cost simulation block and just put your functional mockup unit there and then you can run, yeah, run your simulation uh, from simulink. Okay, you can also do model order reduction. It needs more time steps. Uh, it needs also an eigenvalue and uh, another internal step, but that's also possible. So if you want to further reduce the model setup and the model size, you can use these uh, reduced order modeling techniques inside console multiphysics. Okay, and then when you are ready, you can launch MATLAB and you can use uh, regular MATLAB codes to, to extrude the state matrices, the state uh, vectors, like the, with this MPH reduction, that's a built-in function in MATLAB, so you can extract those matrices from the model you set up some parameters there and then you can call a typical built-in matlab solvers to solve the system inside matlab without using console's graphical user interface and then you can use the same uh, plots and other features to, to plot the results of such models so you can combine matlab syntax with, with the finite element model that runs in the background okay that's another setup here so you could also use these state space matrices and blocks, not just the functional mockup units. That's also possible with these uh, extra features here. Okay, so that concludes my webinar. And if you need any more information or assistance, you can contact us directly at our website, email address, or you can contact myself directly as well. So thank you and have a great day.